Um, well, my name is Amanda Harrison. I'm with the Office of Child Nutrition at the Department of Education, and I'm very pleased to be here this morning. The warm weather we're having is a nice reminder that summer is just around the corner. And for many of our students in this state, um, they'll go on summer break, and they'll go to the pool, they'll go on vacation, and they'll have fun with their friends. Um, but the reality is, for many of our students, the separation from the school year when summer begins is the reality that the connection with consistent, nutritious meals is ended as well. So because of this, um, partnerships exist between the USDA, uh, our state agency, the Department of Education, and many local sponsors. Um, it takes special individuals to be perfectly honest, uh, with great passion and determination to ensure that children in West Virginia have fair and quality access to summer meals. I'm a big C.S. Lewis fan. I have two small children. And of course, C.S. Lewis authored uh, The Chronicles of Narnia. In The Magician's Nephew, he made this quote, for what you see and hear depends a good deal on where you are standing. It also depends on what sort of person you are. So I'm proud this morning that we could gather because we are going to recognize a person who has stood with and for children who are disenfranchised and disconnected in West Virginia. Uh, we've been keeping a little secret um, and I have to give a special recognition to Maisha Robinson and Lisa, thank you so much in the governor's office, you have been phenomenal. Um, we're here to spring a little surprise on Dr. William White. <laughs> you can go ahead and um, relax for a minute. We're going to have a few more speakers. <laughs> we're going to let the we're going to let you absorb the shock. Sorry about that. We're going to let you absorb the surprise. <laughs> um, at this time, I would like to turn um, this portion of the agenda over to uh, Dr. Stephen Payne, who has some remarks that he would like to share with us this morning. Dr. Payne, thank you. Good morning. Pleasure to be here back in the governor's reception room and thrilled to be a part of the governor's team, the State Board of Education, the Department of Education as uh, I come back for a second stint. I guess they thought I didn't get it right the first time, <laughs> Reverend Watson. And uh, good to see you, Reverend Watson. Look forward to work with you. Uh, I guess I didn't get it right the first time, Mr. White, and, and, and so I'm back. And really, really looking forward to uh, providing service. One of our, uh, obviously, the Department of Ed is, is always focused on trying to improve academic achievement. But in order to do that, we want to educate the whole child. And there is no more important program than the food service program that we are proud to have a chance to be a part of at the Department of Ed and uh, working with USDA and, and in a nice partnership with faith-based communities, with schools, with uh, other entities and local communities, because we all know that uh, when kids come to school hungry, they don't learn well. Uh, in fact, 63% of our kids in West Virginia depend on free and reduced lunch meals uh, before they come to school uh, in order to, to learn. And uh, I've actually watched breakfast programs in, increase and participation rates increase. Uh, of course, our lunch programs have increased and you know we're very proud of the work that we do in that regard. So we're a proud partner in the Summer Food Service Program to help serve free healthy meals to children in low income areas during the summer months. And we partner, as I said, with many, many local entities as we do that. Um, you really don't want to hear much more from me, I'm sure, because we have a special guest, as you already know. And, uh, but, but before we get to that, I have an honor uh, bestowed upon me to introduce the governor's chief of staff. He's a tremendous West Virginian. I've only gotten to work closely with him for the past three weeks, and I can already tell that we're going to have a a great run at this. Uh, without further ado, please welcome me and joining Chief of Staff, Mr. Nick Casey. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I bring two things. One is greetings from the governor. The governor had intended to be here, but you may have heard he was out in the field yesterday working early, so uh, <laughs> we were able to put that together today. But, but the other thing I bring you is thanks. 
big thanks. Big thanks for all that's been done, all that you all do, and, and to Dr. White particularly. Thanks for you. This, this isn't an honor. This is a thank you. Uh, I run around some folks who are involved in education, and one of the folks I sit with is at a football game, superintendent of a county I won't mention. And I was giving him a hard time because I was kidding him how his county had been reported that it was snowing outside. It was a Monday morning. And it was snowing. And they declared school open. And they brought all the kids into school. They fed them. They gave them box lunches. And they sent them home. I said, why do you do that? Why did you just call off school? He said, it's Monday morning. And in that particular county, the kids are hungry. It was just the saddest kind of conversation you can have when you think about that, that to keep our kids not being hungry on the weekends, you got to feed them a lot on the week Friday, and you got to get them back in Monday, even if it's a snow day that normally you'd call off. And then you see the good work that people do in Mercer County particularly that, that Dr. White has done. And I just, I just really, that's the thank you from the governor. So appreciative that, that you all look after the kids the way you do. It is, it is a, it is somewhat of an embarrassment for this state to say I, we have hungry children here, but we all know how tough it is, and it's a tough time in West Virginia, and, and we're very, very glad you're here. So let me tell you what the governor wrote. And I, Dr. White, I know he wrote this because he edited it and gave it back, <laughs> which he is prone to do. Dr. White is a real champion for the people. His commitment to bettering West Virginia is undying, and for him to be recognized today by the USDA for his work with our children in Mercer County is well deserved. Our children are our future and we must continue to nurture them and provide the best possible environment for them to grow and learn. I commend Dr. White for his outstanding work and I know he'll continue to do great things for our kids in all West Virginia. Dr. White who runs, he's part of the governor's office through the Herbert Henderson Office of Minority Affairs. We're delighted he's here with us in that role but we're really, really, really proud of him. Thank you, Dr. White. At this time, it is my esteemed pleasure to introduce Diane Limbacher. She comes to us from USDA. She is a phenomenal individual, and she is the Deputy Regional Administrator. So she has um, spared some time with us today. And at this time, she will make some remarks and proceed with the award presentation to Dr. White. Diane, thank you. It is really a pleasure to be here today to honor you, Dr. White. Uh, we at the Food and Nutrition Service have nine state agency in the region, and we also have 15 of the nutrition assistance programs. Some of them I'm sure you're familiar with SNAP, National School Lunch Program, National School Breakfast Program, the WIC program, but the Summer Food Service Program is so essential because nationally we serve 29 million children when school is in session. When it's out of session, we're only reaching 3.6 million. So there's a huge gap. So we need champions like Dr. White to come into the picture and help feed kids. Dr. White, though, coming in as a first time sponsor, first time sponsor in 2016, really created a model program for the entire United States his first year. He not only fed the children, he you partnered with community programs. You got the co two different colleges involved. So not only did you feed their, them physically, you fed their minds. So you had teachers come out that you were teaching them during the summer. Uh, you, not only did you continue with their food, you continued with their education. So really can't thank you enough for not only creating, as I said, a model in West Virginia, but a model we would like to see throughout the United States. So you epitomize the Summer Food Service Program in the very first year that you did this. So again, thank you very much. So if I could ask you to come up, it's an honor for me to present the Champion Award to you from USDA. So Dr. William White, in recognition of your efforts to expand the USDA Summer Food Service Program by building partnerships with local teachers, a certified food handler, the Community Action Agency, church members, and the local college in order to provide a variety of activities designed to increase program participation during the summer of 2016. And as I said, I don't know how you did it the very first year having a model program 
that we want to expand throughout the United States. Thank you. Thank you so much. I can't thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. And all of, I, I see so many of my buddies here, and all of you are going to pay big time. <laughs> this has been really, really um, a bit overwhelming because, you know, I did I, the program. I, I started talking to Sibeli. Sibeli and I have known each other for a while, and we stop, and I'm learning how to speak Portuguese, and she's from Brazil, and we stop in the hallway, and I'm, we're pract I'm practicing my, my Portuguese, and, and then uh, once, one day, I was, uh, I was at my, my church, and uh, one, of the, one of the retired teachers stopped and told me, we started talking about the fact that there was not, uh, uh, Energy Express was not going to be happening in Mercer County at that time, and a lot of other things were happening, and, and I am, I love our kids, and it's critical that we get them educated. But it's also critical, we can't get them educated unless we get them fed. And it's also very, very upsetting to see how many kids there are in the summertime who just don't get a meal. And they're running the streets and they're struggling, but uh, so I said uh, to my church, I said, we need to do something about this. We've always been a church that uh, had focused on education and we had stopped doing that for a while. But now we're back at the point where we're, we're gonna focus on education and nutrition. Uh, and so we, uh, I, I, I said, let's put this program together. And, you know, I, I figured, you know, I would get a few teachers here and there and I get a, we have two colleges that are Bluefield College, we have Bluefield State College and Bluefield College is in Virginia, but a lot of their folks come and work in West Virginia. So I said, and, and plus it was helpful that the, uh, the chair of the education department at Bluefield College is also our, our church musician. And she came in and she put triangles on and she had costumes and worked with the kids. It was really absolutely phenomenal what happened. But the thing that was awesome, and this is one of the things I hope that all of you would keep, take it, keep in mind, sometimes all you have to do is ask people. I didn't have any problems getting enough, a food handler, you know, the, the county wanted to make sure that I had a food handler in there, the USDA wanted me to have a food handler in there, had no problems getting certified teachers who were retired, some of them and some of them weren't. Many of them didn't even belong to my church, but they were really curious and wanted to work with these kids. And many of them have already volunteered already and we're, we're getting people from both Virginia and West Virginia because we're a border city who are now gonna participate this year. So it's good, I expect it to be um, uh, very successful again this year. But we had no idea that we were gonna be as successful as we were. Our first year, as yes, we're a small church, but our first year we had 55 kids who registered. 55 kids, that was amazing. And I'll just share just a couple, couple of stories. There was one child, a little redhead kid, he's about this tall, <clears throat> and he came in and he said, Dr. White, lunch was really good today, uh, but my mother is hungry. Could, could you please let me take a hamburger home to her? And it broke my heart. I mean, these are the kind of kids, that these kids, not only did they want nutrition for themselves, but they cared about their siblings and they also cared about their, their parents. Uh, and we also, from the academic side, we had a kid who had, who had, had been held back uh, uh, two years. With one six-week program, this kid has been pushed up two years in his regular schoolwork. So now he's at the, rate, the grade there where he belongs. I know, uh, Dr. Payne, that a lot of the schools can't do what we did. We had a 10 to 1 ratio. So our kids were getting a lot of individual attention that they needed. So I'm a, I'm a big believer in public-private partnerships, whether it's the church or whether it's a business. We, we, if, if we're going to make this work in West Virginia, every single person's got to get involved. So, you know, I, I don't know what else to say. It was just, it was a lot of love, a lot of fun, a lot of work, but, it, but we were able to make it work for those kids in Mercer County. And we will continue to do that for as long as we can. So we're committed to continuing our program because of the success and because of the need. The need is, hasn't changed. As a matter of fact, it's gotten worse. So we will continue to work on that program. 
So thank you for this, this honor. I, I have, I'm totally speechless. And anybody who knows me knows that it's rare for me to be speechless. So uh, thanks again. And thank you all for being here. Uh, I, I couldn't, couldn't ask for anything best. Um, you know, this is what it's all about. It's about the kids. And I, I would do it even if nobody else would recognize it. But it's about the kids. And, they, and it's, uh, Dr. Payne, I couldn't, you couldn't, I couldn't have said it better. It's a shame in the United States that we have so much surplus that we have kids who go to bed hungry every day. And they'll never be able to learn until, they, until their stomachs are full. So uh, I'll keep doing it. And you guys keep praying for me and stay. And, just, and if, if you can help me. Uh, if we can help you open up more programs throughout the state, talk to Sibeli and make it happen. Make it happen because there are still a lot of kids out there in the summertime who just don't get enough to eat. So thanks a lot. And USDA, thank you for what you do. And I hope this continues. Thank you, thanks a lot.